Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In the month of November 2023, Microsoft released a whole host of new features for Power BI. In the last two tutorials, I spoke about the button slicer and DAX query view. And in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the reference labels, which is one of the exciting feature available in the month of November 2023. Reference labels are nothing but the custom labels which provide you with additional information related to your data which helps you with comparison, with your KPIs, with your metrics, with your goals, etc. So I've created a card visual here along with the reference labels which gives you insights more into the data. So let's take a look at the top half of the card over here. I have an icon over here and then my total sales amount which is 4.6 million for the year that has been selected in the slicer. And in the bottom half of the visual over here, I have same period last year, which says that in the year 2020, my sales were 2.98 million. And this year it is up by 54.9%. Likewise, I also have current month sales, which is 569K and it is down by about 3.92%. And it's also conditionally formatted to display green whenever the value is above zero and red whenever the values are in negative. So this is what we will be creating today. So let's get started with this tutorial. So let's go ahead and add a new visual over here, which is nothing but the card visual. I have also made a detailed tutorial on the card visual in previously on my channel. You can check that video out as well. But in this tutorial, I'm going to focus only about the reference labels. I also have some of the measures already created. So I'm going to just get into that. So first let's add the measure called total sales and then let's head over to the format section of the visual over here. The first section here is size and style. This is pretty much default and it is same across most of the visuals. You can adjust the size and style of that particular visual. And then we have title over here. You can turn on uh, or turn off the title. We have the shape over here, which lets you change the shape of that particular visual. For example, you can choose to have a rounded rectangle. For now, let's go ahead with rectangle shape. And then next comes the layout here where you have the alignment. You can choose to align it on the top, middle or at the bottom. So let's go ahead with the top alignment in this case. And then there is orientation, whether you want vertical, horizontal or grid. This basically comes into play when you have multiple fields into this particular visual. Let's, for example, add number of orders to this. So you have the orientation now vertical. If I change this to horizontal, this will move in the horizontal section. And then there is also grid that you can play around with. For now, let's go ahead with horizontal and also let me get rid of the number of orders over here. Let me collapse this and let's head back. So that was the layout section. And then the next section here is the call out section. And over here, let's go to the value section now. And here you'll be able to play around with the formatting of those values. For example, you can make that bold, change the color of that particular value over here. For now, let's leave it at black. You can also change the display units here if you want to and then the value decimal places and if there is no value what is it that you want to show this as and then there's also a label option over here in case you want to change the label for example right now it says total sales if i want to just display as sales i can do that from here i can also make that bold and change the color of that particular label and now let's head to the next section over here, on, which is the reference labels. And this is the important section that we will be focusing today. And let's start by adding in some information over here. So I already have a couple of measures created. Let me add the measure, which is same period last year, which is nothing but based on the year that is selected. Here I'm displaying the sales that have happened in the previous year, which is 2020. It's saying that the previous year sales were 3 million. Let me add one more measure here, which is the previous month sales. So now I have both the measures over here, same period last year and previous month sales. So let's scroll down a little and look at the other options that are available. One is you can select the entire series or you can select to choose all of them. So when you choose all over here is when the changes that you make to this visual is affecting the entire visual. And when you select a particular series, for example, total sales, or let's say I had added number of orders earlier, you're only making change to that particular section. So when you change this to all, you have some of the sections which are available to you when they are not available when you choose one of the series. For a, let's say I've now selected all, and now you can see that I have all of these options available for me. But if I change this to total sales, 
I do, will not have the options available for me to play around with either the divider or the background. So in this case, first let's work with the total series and change this to all so that I have my detailed divider background turned on. So let's go to the divider here first and then you can choose the divider. The divider is nothing but this section over here. You can choose how you want that particular divider to appear. Dotted, dashed, etc. Let's increase the width of that particular divider. You can also ignore the padding if you would like to. And then you can also change the color of that particular divider. Let's say you want to have a different color, you can choose to have that as well. And then the next section here is the background section. So this is where you'll be able to change the background of the bottom section. So let's choose the blue color over here and increase the transparency to about 40%. And then the next section is the layout arrangement and this is where you get to select the arrangement for the entire visual. You will not be able to choose the series over here for example total sales and then take a look at the layout. So you will have to select all and then on the layout here you can choose either rows or columns. So when you choose columns over here the measures that you add will appear as columns and then in the next section over here you can choose the alignment how you want to align them vertical horizontal so this is what i will be going ahead with and then there is spacing spacing between the labels and outer padding you can play around with that and the next section here is the image so image here is basically i'm going to turn this on i'm going to select image url i already have a url in my clipboard, I'm going to paste that and confirm. So you see that the image is added over here. All I have to do is play around with the size of this particular image. I'm going to drop this to about 50 pixel and then choose the position where I want that particular icon to appear. You have different options, left, right, bottom and top. I'm going to select left over here. Let me increase the size of that particular icon over here to about 80 or so. And then let's scroll up and to the section where I can bring or align my value over here which is nothing but under layout I think vertical alignment yes um, so I'm gonna do this center aligned and now let's scroll down back again and this time under the reference labels instead of choosing all I'm gonna choose total sales and when I choose total sales I have my labels that I have added over here same period and previous month sales and below here I will be able to choose the label that I want to play around with for example right now same period last year is selected and I can and then I have my title I can choose to have the title which is by default or I can give it a custom name for example let's say if I don't want same period last year I need something else I can change that text over here for now I'm just gonna leave it at field name and then I can make this bold and if you want you can change the color as well and then the value section let's come down over here you can play around with the values I'm gonna add two more decimal values to my value over here and then the next section is called detail so this is where you will be able to add in more information into your labels let's turn this on so when I turn this on I have an option again to add data so this is where I want to showcase the percentage of whether it's an increase or decrease let me just go back and check what is the um, label that I have selected which is same period last year so I'm gonna scroll down to detail I'm gonna click on add data and then go to the table where I have my measure created in this case it is formatted same period last year I'm gonna select that and now you have the value appearing over here so let me show you the measure that I have created formatted same period last year so this is nothing but um, let me select the same period last year for example what I can do is I can now go to my DAX query view and go to formatted same period last year remember I had made this tutorial I can go to quick queries and then select define with references and evaluate the reason why I'm selecting this is because I am referencing another measure within this particular measure so what am I doing here formatted same period last year format right let me just increase the size of this so that you can see this better so I'm saying Format same period last year format that as a percentage with two decimals and add in a value over here If my percentage is less than zero then add the down arrow else add the up arrow so I've copied this particular arrow from the website called symbol.cc What I did was I just went to up arrows over here I just hovered over it and clicked on copy came back to power bi and I pasted that particular value over here so this is the measure that I'm using to add that extra detail into my card visual and the same period last year percentage is basically not, nothing but the calculating the difference between the total sales and same period last year and dividing that by same period last year to know the difference 
of whether it is an increase or decrease and now let's choose the second label which is the previous month sales and let's scroll down let's turn on the detail label click on add data similarly i have another measure created which is nothing but formatted month on month so this says that it is negative 3.92 percent and now it's time for us to do some conditional formatting which will automatically change the color based on the positive and negative values so to do that what i will do is i'm going to come back into my details section so this is where we added so this is what we want to change i'm going to come here to font color i've created a measure here which is called month color if my month over month is greater than zero, then it is green, else return red. I'm going to use this particular measure as a conditional formatting and go to my orders, month color. I'm going to choose this and click on OK. So you see that it has now turned red. Likewise, I'm going to go back over here and choose. I'm going to scroll up. Make sure you have selected same period last year. I'm going to scroll down into my detail tab and then click on the font color conditional formatting. Go back to field value. What field should this be based on? This should be now based on the last year color measure that I have in my model. I'm going to click on OK. And you see that this has now turned green. If I choose any other year over here, you see that both have turned negative and both of them are appearing in red. And I, have, I also want to make this bold, so let me come back to the format section, go to the reference labels and this time I'm going to choose the previous month sales. My title, I want this to be in bold, you can, I have now selected that. And then let's take a look at the other options that are available over here. So we looked at detail and then divider, background, layout, spacing, we looked at. We looked also looked at the image and then the last one over here is card. So basically apply setting to the entire series. Padding, you can choose how you want the padding to appear, basically narrow, wide, etc. I'm going to clip it at normal. You can also choose to fill the entire card with a particular color. For example, let's say you want to fill with the entire color, something like this. You can do that as well. For now, I'm going to just leave it at 100%. And then you can also choose to add an image over here. And now the next section here is border. You can change the border color if you would like to or also increase the width of the border. And then you have your shadows over here. You can turn them on and then you can choose the offset how you, however you want. And then there's also glow that you can choose from. And then the last section here is the accent bar. I'm going to turn this on and position. I'm going to choose as top. And then I'm going to choose the color as this blue over here and also increase the width to about 12. So this is what it looks like now. I'm going to also change the position of the shadow over here to about center. And this is what it looks like now. You can play around with this and adjust this according to your size and requirements. So this is how you can create the new card visual with reference labels to add in more information add in which gives you more insights into your data set so that's it guys in this particular tutorial i hope you found this tutorial helpful you have learned something new today please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials